。それではご講演いただきますのは、NAB 全米放送事業者協会のゴードン・スミス会長です。スミス様の経歴は入り口でお渡ししております資料に記載しておりますのでどうぞご覧くださいそれではスミス会長よろしくお願いいたします<笑>こんにちは<笑>私は。Woke up at 4 a.m., jet lagged. I was recounting in my mind the, the many times it has been my privilege to come to Japan. I counted 12 previous occasions, this being my 12th. I have enjoyed each one, and I'm especially honored to be here today to speak. About broadcasting. I've been here first to sell frozen vegetables to different Japanese trading companies. I came next as a United States Senator to meet with the officials of your government. And now I am here at the invitation of Nabui san, and I am honored by this invitation. To join you at the first General Assembly of the Society of Visual and Cultural Network and the celebration of the 50th anniversary of the Aizo Shimbun. This invitation first came to me because Nabui san、uh, has been a regular attender of the NAB trade show in Las Vegas, Nevada. And while there last April, we celebrated his 40th year of consecutive year of attending the NAB show. So when he gave me this invitation, how could I say no? It's a privilege to be with you today. So I applaud the creation of this organization. An organization that will provide a forum for young media and broadcast professionals to gather and discuss the future of the global creative industry and to support technologies that are expanding the growth of broadcasting here in Japan and all over the world. I appreciate this opportunity to speak to you about how the United States broadcasters are seizing the opportunity in this new digital age in which we live, an age to secure a vibrant future for broadcasting, and how we in the United States, through the National Association of Broadcasters, are trying to support this effort. Our association, the NAB, is advancing the interests of broadcasters before the United States government. That is our first responsibility. We do this so that broadcasters can continue innovating and serving their communities as only they are able to do. But though we're focused on broadcasters in the United States, We also realize the importance of supporting interests of broadcasters around the world. Just in the last month, I have been to South America and Europe and now Japan, pursuing the interests of international broadcasting. So it's a particular pleasure to me to see how well the United States and Japan, Japanese broadcasters, are working together. To create opportunities 
for our broadcasters to exchange ideas and to share our innovations. You see, broadcasting really has no national boundaries. What we do for our citizens is indispensable and irreplaceable because our signal comes from one source and goes to everyone with an antenna who can pick it up at no cost. We're indispensable because unlike the internet, we really focus on including everyone and making sure they have the information, the entertainment, and even the emergency warning that are so essential when faced with things like typhoons, earthquakes, and other natural or man-made disasters. Well, again, it's a pleasure to be here in Japan because we have the pleasure of welcoming over 1,300 Japanese visitors to our NAB show each year in Las Vegas. We're thankful for their attendance. We need their input, and we're grateful for all they bring and contribute to broadcasting. Japan's broadcasters have consistently contributed excellent content to NAB's Broadcasting, Engineering, and Information Technology Conference. We call it the Be It Conference. They've done this in recent years. In fact, earlier this year, NHK won the Be It Conference's annual Best Paper Award for its presentation on uses of artificial intelligence in television production. Our productive relationships serve to remind us that broadcasting is a global business and that we all share the common goal to inform, educate, and entertain our audiences. But this is a challenging time, but it's also an exciting time to be in the media industry. Throughout the media and entertainment marketplace, we're seeing the incredible power of the convergence between broadcasting and broadband. New technologies are fueling broadcasters' ability to serve their viewers and listeners wherever, however, and whenever a consumer desires. In, recent, uh, in a recent Pew Research study, their survey showed that roughly 9 in 10 adults in the United States get at least some of their news online, either through mobile devices or through their desktop computers. And digital sources are currently second only to TV news as the most powerful news platform. Younger adults especially are likely to turn to the internet for their news and entertainment. Meanwhile, Americans turn to their broadcast radio and televisions above all other mediums in emergency situations. You see, when there's a typhoon coming or some disaster, the first things that break down are our mobile devices and people must count on broadcasters. So in addition to radio and TV station broadcasts, Americans also get the information they need from our websites, broadcasters' websites, their digital apps and social media pages. So our world is at the same time both more connected and yet more untethered than ever before. People can access virtually anything from virtually anywhere. And there are millions of sources of information. And because of this, the role of broadcasters in the United States has become even more critical. Why is that? Because we present the public with facts and information they can trust. In survey after survey, 
the American people say that is the one place you can turn to get just the facts. No matter what is said, we are not in the fake news business. We present the public with the facts, and that's the information they trust. We provide information about local issues that matter most to them and their families, and we keep our communities safe and informed during times of emergency. Recently, we had a terrible hurricane that recently struck the, United, the southeastern United States. We called it Hurricane Florence. We don't number them, we give them human names. And this hurricane that hit North Carolina and South Carolina reminded us, all Americans, of the critical role that broadcasters play as first informers in their communities. On that occasion, local radio and TV broadcasters across the region worked around the clock to deliver the information their communities needed to stay safe before, during, and in the aftermath of this terrible hurricane. They braved dangerous conditions, including nearby floods and tornadoes that developed as a consequence of the typhoon. And yet they remained at their stations to provide a lifeline of information to their neighbors, to their local communities. Now this unparalleled commitment to serving our communities is what fuels America's television and radio broadcasters to constantly innovate and to invest in new technologies. Broadcasters are the most trusted and reliable source of information, so we want to keep our signals available on every device, whether those devices are smartphones, laptops, tablets, even wearables and connected watches and other technologies which I've seen here in Japan just in the last few days that are on the horizon. We're also utilizing over-the-top services to deliver content through internet connected devices such as computers, gaming consoles, set-top boxes, tablets and phones. 72% of over-the-air TV households also access over-the-top services. So again, you see this convergence. So we are seeing a growth in this convergence between broadband and broadcast among all consumers in the United States. Many of the challenges and opportunities our industry faces are being driven by new technologies and primarily of the Internet Protocol, or IP as we call it, that creates distributions in many kinds of forms. Now, I know that Japan has been integrating the Internet and broadcasting for several years through the 2013 launch of HybridCast, a broadcast service that converges broadcast and broadband delivery. I understand that this technology was pioneered in large part by Japan's public service broadcaster, NHK. But it is now used by almost all of Japan's commercial and non-commercial TV series. Developments like these that, in, that integrate the internet and broadca broadcasting are rapidly changing broadcasting's business model leading us to make more choices that affect the future. And of course, Japan has led the world in the development of 8K super high vision service, supporting 16 times the resolution of HDTV and also providing 22.2 .2 channels of sound. It's truly amazing. After years of development and demonstrations, we are thrilled to hear that NHK will begin the regular 8K direct-to-home satellite broadcast on December 1st of this year. I look forward to hearing about continued progress in this very frontier area. I thank NHK for being a pioneer. One choice we can make as broadcasters 
is to believe in a virtuous cycle, a cycle that adopts new distribution platforms and serves to build our overall audience as we engage with them on new platforms. So embracing our strength while capitalizing on new technologies ensures our further evolution and, and promises a very vibrant future. We are live, local, and targeted. We are the most trusted source of news and information for those events that shape the world and our local communities. So when we take our strengths and combine them with new technologies like IP distribution and greater connectivity, broadcasters can leverage the combination to make our engagement with audiences even stronger. And this brings us to the exciting development of what we call Next Generation TV, the world's first broadcast standard that offers the advantages of both broadcast and broadband. Through Next Gen TV, broadcasters are able to deliver the benefits of ultra-high definition TV to viewers, which includes high resolution, high dynamic range, and high frame rate video images, multi-channel immersive sound, as well as interactive features and custom customizable content. Viewers can also look forward to more choices, more services, and more flexibility, along with improved reception and building penetration of free over-the-air signals, while delivering increased bandwidth of content within existing TV channels. With Next Gen TV, we see the seamless conversion of over the air and over the top. In other words, increasing the efficiency and the value of our spectrum. For those of you who may be students, spectrum is just like real estate. They're not making any more of it. And so those of us with license to certain segments of spectrum need to be constantly investing in their quality and in their efficiency. In the US, there is an emphasis on increasing the capacity of wireless broadband services and to the development of 5G internet service. Now, you might think that is a threat to broadcasting, but we believe broadcasting has a role in 5G and the convergence of broadband and broadcast is a very strong component of advanced television service. That is why Next Gen TV is based on the internet protocol. This is the system that supports seamless blending of internet and traditional television content. Because of the flexibility of Next Generation TV, terrestrial broadcasters can continue to evolve over time continually providing better services to their viewers. The flexibility of Next Gen TV cannot be overstated. It can be specifically tailored to the preferences of different regions of broadcasters while maintaining the economies of scale achieved by having a global standard. Now we realize Next Gen TV is a global phenomenon. Many companies in Japan, including NHK, have made valuable contributions to the development of Next Gen TV that are benefiting other broadcasters from around the world who are considering the deployment of Next Gen using the ATSC 3.0 standard. Now, in the United States, we're very pleased that just this year, the United States government granted permission for our broadcasters to use the ATSC 3.0 standard on a voluntary basis. It'll probably take a decade for its full implementation, but we are beginning. As broadcasters in the US move to unleash the next generation of free broadcast TV service, we are working with the government, our government, to ensure as much flexibility as possible to 
to allow stations to provide their very best services to their viewers. Now, some of you may know that broadcasting relies, of course, on spectrum, and in the U.S. it is a highly sought-after commodity. And our friends in the telephone industry want our spectrum for mobile broadband services. So our government recently concluded a process to reallocate some broadcast spectrum to wireless broadband. It was called the Broadcast Spectrum Incentive Auction, where they bid on certain quantities of our broadcast spectrum. This auction is concluded now. And following its conclusion last year, the government determined that nearly 1,000 television stations must move to new frequencies over the next two years to make room for these wireless carrier services. We've been working with the government to ensure that the American people do not lose access to their local TV and radio stations so that they're not threatened by these frequency moves. Far from being simply a TV issue, we're also at NAB concerned how this auction and repacking may impact radio stations who are co-located on television towers. At the conclusion of, of the repacking process, U.S. broadcasters will have less spectrum and, and, a, and a lot fewer stations. But we are focused on increasing the efficiency and the value of our remaining spectrum. So we may have less spectrum, but we'll actually, with Next Gen TV, have more to offer to our viewers and listeners. By deploying and operating Next Gen TV and making the best and highest use of U.S. spectrum, we will offer superior services to the communities we serve. We will also ensure our ability to retain and use that spectrum for generations to come. You see, if you don't invest in what the business that you have, the spectrum that you're licensed to use, you will lose it over time to other entrants into telecommunications. We're determined not to lose more spectrum. So broadcasters in the U.S. are eager to deploy next-gen TV and are already experimenting with broadcasts using the ATSC 3.0 standard. Recently, the NAB partnered with capital broadcasting companies WRAL-TV and NBC Universal to present the Winter Olympic Games from the Republic of Korea using next-gen TV on an experimental broadcast channel in the state of North Carolina. It was very successful. We're also collaborating with the Consumer Technology Association, which represents consumer elect the consumer electronics industry. We're also working with the Tribune station, WJW, to operate a living laboratory um, of next-gen TV in the state of Ohio. And like WRAL, we successfully aired the Winter Olympics uh, Games in ultra high definition throughout the state of Ohio. And two initiatives to establish markets for early deployment of Next Gen TV are now underway. One led by an alliance of broadcast stations known as TV Pearl Group and one led by Sinclair Nexstar and Univision are also underway in Phoenix, Arizona. One project includes the use of the single frequency network, or SFN, that NextGen TV allows, thereby providing great spectrum efficiency and improved coverage. While there are a lot of exciting developments in, technolo in television technology, we don't forget about radio at NAB. NAB is actively working with automakers and internet service providers from around the globe to develop the next generation of radio that it combines broadcasting 
with internet connectivity to create new and engaging user experiences. We've been working with numerous automobile manufacturers like Ford, General Motors, and Honda on various software developments, projects for radio in the connected car. You have probably heard the term autonomous vehicles. Those are driverless vehicles. I'm told that is in our future. Autonomous vehicles are also presenting new opportunities for broadcasters. Media companies are anticipating that new opportunities for video entertainment will exist in aut autonomous vehicles. And so since everyone in an autonomous vehicle is a passenger, all the occupants of future cars can enjoy video programs while being transported to their destinations. So there'll be more radio and more television available in the autonomous vehicles of the future. Broadcasters are well positioned to satisfy this need using the capabilities of next-gen TV standard. And we're told by Ford and General Motors that that is the standard that they are going to use in the cars of the future for video because it has such powerful mobility characteristics. The convergence of these technologies was on full display at this year's NAB show where we presented the Next Gen TV Transport, a driverless vehicle that received ATSC 3.0 high definition programming live from an experimental broadcast station 10 miles away. We believe that this was the first ever com a combination of next-gen TV with an autonomous vehicle. So this is an exciting time for broadcasting, as new technologies such as these are giving us the ability to improve the delivery of our content to our listeners and viewers. Broadcasters and media professionals are also exploring artificial intelligence technology to assist them in content creation and distribution and to develop a more efficient post-production workflow. For example, artificial intelligence can compose sports highlight reels on or short newscasts very quickly. It can also sort raw video or still images through image recognition and perform statistical analysis of data such as with sporting scores also at very high speeds. Human interaction may only be needed in the final editing of a program. Artificial intelligence also can be used to gain audience insights such as demographic trends to optimize programming decisions and analyze audience response to advertising. It provides us so many more tools to make broadcasting financially successful. Though we may be familiar with artificial intelligence in our everyday lives already with devices such as Amazon's Alexa or Apple's Siri, Broadcasters are still in the early days of utilizing this technology, but artificial intelligence's potential uses in content creation, media distribution, and business applications hold great appeal to broadcasting. So as we seek ways to adapt to consumers' changing needs and provide new enhanced services for the future, it is really important that broadcasters never lose sight of, never lose focus on our most important, our highest purposes. What are those purposes? They certainly are serving local communities, delivering life-saving information when disasters strike, and defending, thirdly, our democratic ideals the right to free speech, and of the freedom of the press. 
All these things are at the heart of what broadcasters do. And we provide all of this to our audiences for free. Recently, I was invited to address broadcasters from South America. I went there with a technological speech. When my host asked me what I was going to speak about, I told him that it was a technology speech. And he said, could you change your speech to talk about our highest purposes? And I said, meaning what? He said, meaning we need to be reminded about the freedom of the press and our responsibility in preserving democratic institutions. Apparently, some of those countries were an election away from losing their freedoms. This was held at Montevideo, Uruguay, this conference. I was given a tour of their ancient city that the Spanish had built some 400 years ago. At the entrance to the ancient city, there was a gateway that had been built by the Spanish. At the top of the gateway that still stood after four centuries, there was a keystone. And when I saw that keystone, I thought of that being the metaphor for broadcasting's role in freedom. Because freedom of speech, freedom of the press, is what we provide of greatest value to our citizens. To report the facts without fear or favor. To root out corruption where we find it. To report the truth and trust the judgment of the voting public. If you take that keystone of freedom of the press out, the ancient gate falls. And so do our freedoms. So in this digital age, as newspapers continue to struggle more and more, the role of broadcasters in journalism becomes ever more important. That is our highest purpose. And it is our intention, in fact, our obligation to continue investing in new technologies that allow us to do our jobs better. The peoples of Japan are depending on you. The peoples of the United States are depending on us to live up to this highest purpose and to continue to invest in our spectrum and in our technology, our delivery platforms, to make sure that freedom continues to reign. So I thank you again for this invitation to speak with you today and to celebrate this 50th anniversary. We look forward to our continuing dialogue with Japanese broadcasters, our friends from Japan. We hope that continues at this coming April's NAB show in Las Vegas. I look forward to working closely with you as we continue down this path of success and responsibility, meeting our challenges head on and embracing the opportunities of, that technology gives to us. To that end, I thank you and wish you all good things. スミス会長どうもありがとうございました。<音楽>